Today from 4 o'clock this Friday afternoon, this is Today on ENCA. Artificial intelligence, AI, already making its effects known to educators and learners around the world. While here in South Africa, we do often deal with connectivity issues. You have to wonder how AI is going to fit into that. The rollout of free bandwidth to educational institutions and to top it off, we're facing a teacher shortage, a teacher shortage crisis is a bit of a problem at the moment. So all that's going on is AI the way of the future? Well, let's find out. I'm joined by Stadio School of Education, uh, their graduate and school teacher, Florence Vermeulen, uh, joining us this afternoon. Florence, good afternoon. I appreciate your time. Is AI going to take the jobs of teachers? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, I would say definitely not. Um, the role of teachers is likely to shift towards emphasizing skills, which machines cannot do. Um, so while technology assists in delivering content, teachers will become more vital in fostering critical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence, and most importantly, interpersonal skills. So even though AI might move or will move, or is busy doing so, from the traditional content delivery, um, we as teachers are there to guide the students into problem solving, collaboration, and most importantly, to adapt to this um, change of within technology itself. And what does that technology look like in South Africa at the moment to your mind, Florence? If you don't mind, I mentioned globally it seems to be moving in that direction. I mentioned a couple of issues we have here in our country. Does AI come into your everyday job, your Monday to Friday, sitting in a classroom with pupils? Does AI even feature? Well, it does do come, it increases daily. Um, I cannot underestimate my learners because they have this gadget called the cell phone, which gives them access <laughs> to AI and all these other platforms. However, incorporating it in education is important in, in a vital way to show guidance into how it can be used for the learners to be beneficial um, in the near future. So despite the, the shortcomings and all the other external factors that plays a vital role, and sometimes limit you to um, use it in the classroom to the positive effect on it. It doesn't prohibit me as an educator to still equip them with those skills mm -hmm. that they do require and the outcome of AI within my pedagogical um, approach and the way I teach and what I use yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, it's such a good point as well. I suppose, and I mean this with all due uh, respect as well, it sounds like you might be the exception to the rule when it comes to educators. Yes, the youngsters sitting in the class, as you say, because of the cell phones, they're well uh, versed on technology. Yeah. But you might, and I mean this again respectfully, find a, an older uh, educational demographic, older teachers who might push back against something like, like AI. Where do you see them coming in? How do they adapt to something like this and how does it fit into a schooling system? You could have a teacher like you who can use it, can teach it, can adapt, but a schooling system, a school itself, an individual school uh, system might not be built for it. Well, I think it's all got to do with the school culture itself. Mm. Um, there's a question that says, what makes a great teacher? And I want to go back to the drawing board of saying, you do need empathy, you do need passion, and passion requires you, and one of the key aspects of um, teaching is the interpersonal skills that you do need to make yourself more adaptable um, to it. So we see ourselves, whether depending on how many years you find yourself in education, we are all lifelong learners, and that depends upon the individual and where they see themselves fit in education as a whole. So whilst the education system becomes very young and vibrant teachers coming forward, they take the lead and when they do see um, what change the AI or technology can bring to the benefit of the learners, I've seen some of my colleagues, they do adapt to it. So they just want to see that it works in some way and somehow form part of that collaboration process for the beneficial aspect for the learners that we serve. I'd like to change tack for a second, and I mentioned this as you and I began talking, the shortage of teachers. And we're hearing that by the year 2025, the year 2030, we could be 55,000 teachers short 
in our country. That's not even to talk about the number of pupils that are still coming through the education system. Uh, does AI have a way of filling that gap? What do you make of the teacher shortage? How would you try and, and deal with that issue? And is AI one of those solutions, maybe in years to come? Well, um, most definitely. And I also do know that there are various schools that have already adapted the AI element, but not substituting the teacher. The mm. teacher becomes very much the guidance process thereof, um, the facilitation of, of incorporating that in education. So um, yes, there is a shortage and there are institutions um, that already get on board with various schools um, where I'm currently finding myself in, in the Western Cape, that use the AI as a navigation to not substitute, but to, fulfill, to fill that gap of shortage in some particular way um, for the learners to still um, make progress and have academic excellence um, at the end of the day. I'm so glad you used the word academic excellence because I know this is an issue at the higher education uh, level, Florence, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this. AI is, is way too clever for its own good. I think we can all attest to that. How do you as a teacher, I'm asking you to take me into the classroom for a moment when you're doing homework and assignments and getting ready for exams with your, with your learners, AI is a very easy way to cheat, isn't it? How are you handling that because, as I say, AI in the hands of uh, a lazy student is a very powerful weapon. Um, well, indeed, I think in basic education itself, um, it's very easy to get on the root of when you can see that ch that is, this is not the child's work itself, especially when it comes to research projects. When they write exams, they don't have much of that um, power to mm. use it. However, when it comes to projects that it have to do at home or in class, um, teachers are very um, alert to the child's um, um, potential and what and where they see themselves in that particular subject and can somehow easily pick up um, that this is not a child's um, true work. However, have used an additional resource, AI, into um, enhancing the task maybe. So teachers are very much alert. Myself is very mm. into that. However, I still also feel the need, that I, or I still do as a teacher, to educate my learners how to use AI, not as a plagiarism, not as a, a, a lazy method of, 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 of doing um, work or, or doing tasks in itself. So exposing learners what technology is and how the digital world can contribute to excellence in education and also make them, you as a teacher need to make them aware that you are alert to what they can do and yeah. how they can go about with using AI in education itself. Yeah, it's responsible use of technology, isn't it? I see that's quite a movement these days. Florence, just before I say goodbye to you as well, I'd like to get your thoughts. We, talk, we spoke about the teacher shortage. You're an educator. You obviously went through all of the years of studying, the qualifications. How do you try and convince someone watching you and I talk today to study to become a teacher? It's not... Uh, one of those jobs these days that seems to be uh, a very, very appealing, a lack of money, hard working hours, insubordinate children. How do you try and convince someone much younger than you and I to come into what you do for a living? I think my passion in teaching um, as a whole and how I conduct myself as an educator uh, within the communities that I serve um, and my engagement um, outside of my community really um, it embodies what teachers are. It's more than just the admin. It's more than just transferring knowledge and teaching content. So my lifestyle and my passion is, 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 is a test to that teaching requires you to have passion, to have empathy for your learners and not passion just to teach, but mm. passion for education as a whole. Um, and therefore you can cross any barriers or fill up any gaps if you have that. If you see yourself teaching as a calling and not just as another job, because like you've said, it's not an easy um, um, profession to be in. But however, if you have the passion, that gaps or bridge the gap to all other aspects where you find yourself sometimes demotivated. Um, but passion is the navigation tool for mm -hmm. 
people to be inspired and not to be sayers, but doers, to yeah. contribute um, holistically within education. Yeah. And artificial intelligence cannot teach or fake passion. And that's what you have. Florence Vermeulen, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this afternoon. Wonderful. Hope we talk again. Study your school of education, a graduate and school teacher uh, there as well. Putting up a good argument against AI. It's relevant. It's not the be all and end all. It's relevant. You need to know about it, but it's not going to replace uh, teachers. It's